to end your lives. And I tell you, as long as you are on this planet, as long as you're walking on this earth, there are going to be some things that you are going to go through. So when those issues come in your life, sometimes you just need to set yourself aside and sit down somewhere and remember what the Lord has already done for you. And when you remember what God has done for you, when you acknowledge that it was the Lord who had brought you out, that the next obstacle, whatever you're going through, that it will bring faith in your life that says that if God did it for me before, I know he will do it again. How many of us know? How many of us know that if the Lord did it for you once, if the Lord did it for you uh, before, that He will do it again? Yes, yes, yes. See, the problem is the problem is that so often that uh, um, the devil wants to bring about doubt in your life. He wants to bring about guilt in your life. He wants to uh, try to hinder your faith. He wants to bring about disbelief in your life. And I tell you, when the, the, when, when, the, when Satan tried to uh, bring these angelic beings or use someone who's around you uh, to bring about disbelief in your life, you better believe that, that God is going to, to do something spectacular in your life. So then, so then, uh, Jesus is on a move, and, and the Bible says that uh, he came to Bethsaida. Now, I observe here that Bethsaida was a place where Jesus did a lot of his miracles, a lot of, of his miracles, just like he did in uh, Capernaum. He had much success. He 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 did. Uh, he made uh, the the uh, the lame to walk. He made the dumb to talk. He uh, uh, he fed the hungry. He did a lot of miracles in Bethesda. But the community of Bethesda, although Jesus did these miracles, they still did not believe or acknowledge him as the Savior. So through their, their because of their disbelief and because of their repentance, Jesus vowed to never do another miracle in that community. You will see, you will find that if you will in uh, Matthew chapter 11 and verse 21 through 24. Now, and, and you know, it, it's a dangerous thing, it's a dangerous thing when God removes his hands off of a community. With all that God has done in the, a community and you dare, dare to have disbelief or unbeing unrepentant, then he will remove his hands from that community. And maybe, just maybe, if you will, that's why we have so many things going on, these events going on in our community, because the community as a whole has withdrew themselves and have become unrepentant. They are not repenting of the things they have done, not repenting of the sins they have committed. And that speaks that speak a lot, that speaks a lot, if you will for uh, even the churches who are involved in those communities. Maybe, 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 maybe uh, if the community or individual would come collectively and repent unto to the Lord, that the Lord will restore his hands on that community. So, so you will find that in Bethsaida, that God, that Jesus said, Woe unto Bethsaida, that uh, they, since you did not repent, he would not do another miracle in that community. And, what, and, and, uh, and he, so he made his way to Bethsaida, but yet there was a blind man uh, in that community, and there was a people that knew or heard about Jesus, and they want to get their blind man some help. They want to get their friends some help, and so therefore they brought him in the presence of the Lord. And, and I, 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 if you look at this, if you look at it, 
you'll find that uh, though Jesus uh, brought judgment on that community, it does, it did not keep him from being a blessing to an individual. And so, so here they brought this man, this blind man, um, uh, to Jesus. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm glad that God does not base your blessings off of somebody else's actions. That God does not keep from healing your body because of how the community is. That God does not uh, stop your miracle because of where the people who are around you. Now observe. Uh, they brought the blind man unto Jesus. And they besought him to touch him. They besought, they asked Jesus to, to touch this man who was blind. And oftentimes in the scripture that uh, blindness or the blind man, if you will, will be representative of those who are spiritually blind. Those who uh, don't, cannot recognize their own sin. Those who do not recognize their own ways. Those who do, do not recognize the power of God. Those who do does not recognize the creative powers of God. Those who do, do not recognize who God is. Those who cannot recognize the goodness and mercy of the Lord, but they can't even think it in their own eyes, even though they are practicing what they do, even in their own eyes, they seem to be right. So therefore, they are totally blind and cannot see the things of God. So what is that saying? They brought this blind man to Jesus. They brought him and asked him to touch this blind man. So then, so therefore, when we are, when we are uh, in, in our communities and we see uh, uh, so many people that we know need the Lord, the first thing that we ought to do is that we ought to take them and pray for them and put them in the presence of the Lord. You see, there are only so many things that we can't do, but I tell you, the Holy Spirit can change a person's heart. How many of us know that the Holy Spirit can change a person's heart? The, that God can turn a person around. God can can turn uh, uh, that drug dealer into a deacon or change, turn that uh, a pimp into a preacher or change uh, that prostitute into a mother. How many of us know that the Lord can change a person or life all around? You see, you see, you see, you think about it, you think about it. You have not always known the Lord, but at some point in your life, the Lord has to come and intervene on your behalf before you try to bring about the self-destruction. How many of us know that the Lord came into your life, you were doing your own thing, but he interrupted you, he interrupted your path, and then you all of a sudden, you the club thinking about you need to go back to church. Yes, yes. So, 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 so they brought him, they prayed, they brought him before Jesus. So then, observe what Jesus done. He took, he took, he took something uh, uh, of the natural realm, a uh, material of uh, the natural realm to bring about one, a, a spiritual application to bring about a spiritual healing in the eyes of this man. So, so look what he does. He says, uh, he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. You remember in Matthew chapter 11 that Jesus brought judgment upon the community to where he said he was not going to uh, do another miracle in that city. And he said it was better for Sodom and Gomorrah than for the city of Bethesda. So what Jesus, he did not negate, he did not uh, stop to bless the man because of the community. So what he did, he took the man out of the community.
here, so that he may be a blessing that the man may receive his healing outside of that community. So what are you saying then? Don't be all dismayed and messed up and all distressed because God moves the people out of your life. Yes, yes. You see, you see that God has to move, remove the people out of your life because they are hindering your blessings. Because he or they are hindering your healing. He, he has to get you by yourself so you can concentrate on him and receive what he has for you. He led him out of the community. He took him by the hand and led him out of a situation that would keep him from being blessed. And I tell you, I tell you that uh, the Lord will take you out of a situation, move friends from around you, or take you out of family situations uh, so he can be a blessing just for you. You see, you're standing in dire need, but the Lord, he has a blessing just for you. So, so he took him out of the town. And then he, he then the Lord had uh, put spit on the man's eyes. And, 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 and chances are and that this man been blind, his eyes been closed, and, and you know how it is uh, when his eyes are closed away at that time, uh, uh, they probably was uh, closed because of all the mucus and everything that closed his eyes. So Jesus took some spit to soften up uh, the uh, material of, of mucus that had closed his eyes shut. And then uh, he put his hands on the man's eyes. And you know, back in those particular days, sometimes uh, they believed that spit on was a uh, ointment, if you will, to help those who had uh, uh, who had problems with their eyes. So Jesus spit on a man's eyes, and his my eyes may be open. And Jesus said, "So now, uh, what do you see?" So this blind man said that I see uh, men walking, but these men walking, they look like trees. So in other words, that uh, uh, he, uh, he saw something, uh, and he saw some images, uh, but he was not seeing clearly. And that's how it is sometimes uh, when uh, people who are first converted, those who are just not uh, eyes been open to the things of God that you will not be able uh, to see everything clearly. You have to grow if you will. You may not see or understand uh, the scriptures as a whole. You may not understand that you need to take some time out and go in prayer. You may not understand the whole essence of why God will give his only begotten son for you. You may not understand that uh, how uh, uh, how it is that uh, the three Hebrew boys was not burned in a fiery furnace. You may not understand uh, how uh, that uh, when uh, uh, the psalmist says uh, the Lord is my shepherd that I shall not want. You may not be able to see clearly if you will about how that she uh, was the Lamb of God. And uh, you may not see uh, how or uh, understand uh, when or uh, how God uh, had a uh, rain manner from above. And uh, I wish I had a little help here. And uh, you may not uh, understand uh, when Joshua uh, uh, had Israel to shout out 
We're going to send just as Ms. Katrina Neely, she's she still there, that she, you know, uh, uh, we, we're going to touch a degree and believe in God, just to believe in God uh, for that in which the healing you are in, you are desiring of Christ. And where, wherever you're aching, whatever is going on, let me just ask that you to put your hand wherever it is. Lord God, we give you glory, we give you praise. We give you glory, we give you praise right now, God, in the name of Jesus. We love you, we, we magnify you. Jesus, oh God, we, oh, we lift up to you, Miss Neely, Miss Katrina Neely, right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, by your power, by your blood, that you said on, shed on the cross, you said, you was wounded for our transgression. And bruised for our iniquities. In the name of Jesus, I pronounce healing in the body of Miss Neely now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That, that any asthma coming against it in the name of Jesus. Now that her lungs and airways will be open in Jesus' name. We give you glory, we give you praise. By the name of Jesus of Nazareth. It is done in Jesus' name. And that the doctors will come and be amazed at the power of God on this morning in the name of Jesus. We give you glory, we give you praise. Everybody give God a hand up for praise. Faith comes by hearing, comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The word of Amen. God. 